Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So in here, we're going to deal with the pagination class before we go to the migration class. So let's deal with pagination here. Now, in this one, uh, it's going to have to do a bit with some CSS, but let's see how we can handle that. First of all, I want to do a little cleanup here so that we remove some of this stuff. So let me go to these plugins, whatever is echoing stuff, I can remove it. Let me clean up the, this is the basic authentication plugin. Let's go to header and footer. Um, let me remove the style.css over here. And let's remove all this content in here. Uh, we can leave the footer and the header here. Let me remove this one. And let's go to the home page. So let's see here. Plugin.php. <clears throat> okay. Just we can leave this. Where is the view file? Let's remove that. Okay. Let me see what I've got so far. Okay. I think this is good enough. It's a little bit cleaner than what we had. All right. So what I want to do is in the pager.php here, in this one, we will use the constructor. So constructor is usually a public function by default, but let's just write it there. Okay. So I'm going to remove this. And then I'm going to create another public function here. And this one is called the display function because this is what is going to display the content. So it will return a string. Here you can return void if you want. Uh, so this doesn't return anything. You can put void there. Okay. So the thing is, whenever you want to display some kind of pagination, you're going to have to call this function, the display function. Now, this display function will be very specific to Bootstrap. So we're going to add Bootstrap CSS. So what you can do instead is you can have several of these functions, depending on what system you're using. Maybe you're using Tailwind, you're using Bootstrap, you can create specific functions for each one of those. So this display, for example, you can know that this one is for Bootstrap. And then you can create another version here like this. And then you say display, for example, Tailwind like that. Um, then you can copy exactly the code that's here, put it here, but with Tailwind classes. And then you can put another one, another function which deals with a custom CSS. So you can call it custom. So it's really up to you what you want to do here. Or in here, maybe the default version, you can put your own custom CSS. That's entirely up to you. Or you can put inline CSS here. But in my own version, this display just shows bootstrap version because uh, I think I have like a bootstrap version and a custom version. I don't use Tailwind or any other CSS library apart from Bootstrap. But that's just to give you an idea of that you can actually put several of these depending on the, <coughs> excuse me, the CSS you're going to be using. That way you don't have to worry about uh, the look of it whenever you change things. Okay. So on the constructor here, we're going to need a few things. The constructor needs to know the limit. Okay. This one should be an integer. Uh, let's put a default value of 10 and we're going to put another uh, variable called extras here. Uh, this is how many, uh, okay, let me explain something a little bit first here. So we're going to go to our bootstrap, the bootstrap um, website, sorry. And once you get there, go to your documentation, the docs, 
and then go to pagination. So here this shows you what kind of CSS you can get if you want to deal with pagination here. So I kind of like this one. So you can choose whatever version of the pagination classes you want here. So let's go with, I like this one that has a, uh, it's the same with this. If we add active somewhere, I think that's the only difference there is that one of these has active, like this one with a number. It's got an active class here on page item. So that's the only difference. So we can actually grab this one. So I'm going to grab, copy that and bring it to my function and paste it in the display function. So in here, we're just going to do, how do we do this? Uh, I will just paste the, um, uh -huh, something like this, right? Now with uh, PHP, you could just step out of the PHP by putting a closing PHP tag and then coming back again into PHP by doing that again. So in that manner, this remains HTML and you can just echo it when you want. So in order to show what's happening here, back to our trusty basic oath, let's just create uh, P, oh, we're gonna call it pager is equal to new. This that one is in the core and then pager like that. Now it takes two parameters here, but they are both optional, uh, limit and extras. We don't have to, but let's put the limit of 10, for example, but that's a default value anyway. So let me leave it out for now, but the way we're going to be doing things is doing this. We're going to put a limit over there. So we'll have to set the limit and say limit is equal to, and then let's put a number. We'll keep it at 10 and then finally we'll say pager and then do this and say display like that. So once we do that, this should show uh, pagination on our page. So if I now refresh, so method construct cannot declare a return type. Okay. So that's my bad there. It, by default, it is void. So <laughs> avoid putting that there, no return type is allowed there. So when we refresh, this is what you get. So return type value must be string none returned. Okay. So that's because I wasn't returning anything here. Uh, what do we do here? You don't have to put a return type here. Uh, you can just leave it open like that save yourself some headache if you're not sure of the return because really it's not returning anything you can instead echo this but i want to keep it html so it's easier to deal with okay so there we go now because we have we don't have bootstrap this doesn't look like what it looks like here so um we have to at least put one library in our framework so you can put multiple libraries here, maybe Tailwind, CSS and stuff so that whichever you want to use at the time, you can easily just switch. Okay. But for us, we're going to put Bootstrap here. Now, it doesn't mean you have to use Bootstrap in your system. It's just up to you what you want to put there. This is what I put. It's Bootstrap. So we're going to go into the assets folder here. I'm going to create a new folder within there. I'm going to call it CSS. And of course we need another folder, um, JS for any JavaScript and another assets folder for images. So this is where you keep all the uh, website level CSS, JavaScript and images. Now those that those that a specific plugin depends on will be inside each plugin, but these are for general use for the entire website.
okay so in here we will put our css bootstrap so i'm going to open that folder which is right here um let me go to a folder that has some um, bootstrap folder so i have bootstrap 5.3 uh, here so it doesn't matter the version you have it doesn't matter really just grab the css files copy them in our case the css files will ever need are uh, inside bootstrap.min.css and you can grab the map as well just so you in case you get an error but usually it's not needed uh, so bootstrap.min.css and which other one here what else what else so it depends what you use most this is all i use so i'm going to copy that and put it inside here like so okay then we can now go to the javascript open the javascript folder and where we have uh, our bootstrap here bootstrap also comes with javascript so here there is the min.bundle.js um, I think this one and the bootstrap.min.js those two are good enough because sometimes the the bundle i think contains everything i don't know whether that's true or not but sometimes you find that drop down menus don't work when you just use the bootstrap.min.js so you can use the bundle instead so let's copy that into our folder and let's paste there so it's just good to have these files in the system in case you need to use them because from my um from my experience when you have a client that's very difficult with uh the ui and stuff bootstrap will save you a lot of time because most of the time especially when you have a project where the functionality is more important than the look uh, in situations like that bootstrap is really a time saver because you don't have to worry about designing the ui and stuff you just concentrate on your actual php so this is why i love uh, bootstrap it saves me a lot of time okay so let's close that and let's come back to our system here so we need to import that boot those bootstrap files that we we added so in here if i go to css you see those are the two files i have you don't really need the map file just bootstrap.min.css is enough uh same here you need these two you may need one of these but who knows so what we want to do is import these files within the the header and footer right so here where we have the header and footer we could have just added them in here um but it's really up to you you know this is a choice you can add them in the css for the for the plugin here or the js for the plugin or i like to put them here so that any of these plugins can you can still use them right so if i go to the plugin.php so on the before view this is where the header is so i could just put my uh i could load it here but a better way to do things is to have separate html files so in the header i'm going to create a new folder this one will be the includes folder and within includes here i will have a new file and this file i'm gonna call header so let me save that as header.php now it's up to you if you want to put header.view.php just so you know these are view files it's easier on the eyes when you are editing here so i prefer to do that though it's not necessary and then um so we have that view file here so that's the header and we have a new file create a new one save this one as footer.view. Dot view dot php all right so with those two files instead of having this here so this is the footer right so i can just cut this out from here 
and paste it in the footer itself. That way we see some actual HTML, which is easier to edit. And same thing before view, I grab that and put it in the header like this. Okay, so when we come back here, instead of echoing stuff here, ideally you don't want to echo anything in the plugin.php file. You just want to include files that have um, any HTML. So here we're just going to say include uh, or require maybe. <clears throat> so let's require and we're going to use the plugin uh, HTTP. No, actually, just the plugin dir. Wait, what's the name of this function anyway? Uh, let's go back to functions here for a second. All right, so inside functions here, I'm looking for... Ah, what did I do? I wanted to search. Okay, so we have get plugin dir. No, no, not this one. Uh... The function I want is plugin dir. Where is that? Okay, let's do this on the search function. Uh -huh. So instead of dir, let's use path. Same as on this next one here. Just so this function is very different from this one. So I'm going to edit that to path and same thing here to path. Okay, so just those two. Hopefully we haven't broken anything yet. Okay, so back to our... Uh, where are we doing this from? This is the header footer plugin. Uh, yes, wait, 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 wait. Header footer plugin. So that will do plugin path like that. And then within plugin path, we can put we can concatenate because this one returns the plugin path and also let me go into the functions here uh, it returns this mm -hmm. now the way we could do things is we could put an optional value in here same as here here i can say uh, a string and say path okay and then equal to empty like so and then all we need to do is put that path so this is optional and whatever we have here up to the end we can concatenate that path at the end like so uh, same thing here let's do path like that so what this essentially does is that if you want to uh, you can put your path within here, within these brackets, or you can put your extra path over here. So for example, if I want this, I want to load the header. So I'm going to do header um, dot view dot PHP like that. So this should uh, sort that problem out and that will load the file. I'll do the same thing here for the footer okay so let's see what happens here so if we do it like that uh, failed to load the file so this is the thing require plugins header footer okay so i didn't put the um, failed to put the actual paths here which is in the includes folder like that okay so that's what it should be all right, so that worked. And because we put the way we designed the function, we could actually just do it like this and it will still work as well. So I can remove that and move this here like so. Uh -huh. So it depends on your style, the style that you wanna use, that will work as well. So if I refresh, it still loads the the bootstrap we can check by saying go to view a view page source and uh where is the header okay so there it is right there header and footer over here but this comes first actually 
for some reason oh yeah so the reason this is rendered first as you can see this is rendered first before even the header and the footer and that's because we are running this outside any of these timed functions so if i go to basic auth we are doing this outside any of these timed functions so this runs long before the entire website loads but maybe that's not the best way to do things so i'm just going to cut that out of there and i will put this in the where there's header footer in the view section here so i'm going to paste that over here that way there's the before view this starts actually before view should be the header and i got confused because of the order in which they are saved but rest assured this runs first before that so the order is like this and then this runs and then that runs so let's put this with footer like so okay all right so let me refresh and there we go so we have our home page we have the footer down here and we have our content in between so now that we've loaded the header and the footer we can now in the header.view file we can now load bootstrap so we just need to link it like that as css and remember that we still have the root path which is the root path to the entire system and then we can do slash css slash bootstrap.min.css like that and save okay so if i now refresh uh, it doesn't show let's see if we view the page source let's see what's wrong with our path so here it's uh we're missing the word assets there so from here it should be assets like that okay so back here and let's refresh okay so i think that's more like it let me come back here and refresh and as you can see bootstrap is now working in our system and if i put active on this thing let me go back to my pager class if i put active on one of these say active this one becomes the active page so let me refresh and as you can see there it is all right so please keep in mind that you can put your very own css file here it doesn't have to be bootstrap so don't feel restricted there okay so let's make this actually functional so what we want to do is create a few links so we want to generate some links first of all um this one instead of previous i'm going to change that to first so instead of previous here let's do first and then next so the way i want this to work is like this so you can do this uh, differently depending on your system so here we should be able to choose how many numbers we can show besides the current page so this is the active current page but then we can choose how many numbers we show before and after so that's the extras so this is the extras we added here right here so that's just one after the main page just like we have here and then next is going to refresh this part so here we have one two three when i click next it should start with four five six or something similar or maybe yes actually four five six that's what next should do and then here you can click the actual page that you want if you want to go back to the first page you click here now of course you can make this as complex as you wish it's up to you this is just to show you that you can what you can do with this if you want you can even put last page first page etc etc however those pages those buttons need to know how many records are in the database for them to make make that determination so it's up to you how deep you want to go with this but we won't go so deep we'll just do what you are seeing there and a few things we want here for example we want things like the limit to be editable so there's a default value of 10 over here and then i will put another variable called offset and the default value is zero and some more 
we'll make one code start and this one will start at one and what have i done that doesn't look right okay something like this start end and then uh page number like that okay so let me just tab these so they look a lot nicer like so all right so the reason these are public is because we want to be able to edit them while calling this um this function here let me save that and close we don't need these anymore so the plugin is this one right that's calling pager so i want to be able to change these the, the values here limit and offset in fact the offset we'll be getting from the page itself so once we do this then we're going to grab the offset from it like this offset is equal to and then we'll say pager offset like that now the reason we grab this offset is because we need to know the offset and the limit when doing a query so we will do this part like this and then we'll use these two values the limit and the offset in the query in order to retrieve the correct set of documents or records right so the reason we can't just have an offset here and create it is because the offset has to be dynamically created to create an offset you need um you need to know the current page number and the limit how many records you were getting at a time so those two things need to be known in order to create an offset and those things so the offset is created inside the pager class because the pager has all that information we don't want to start dealing with page numbers here so we leave that to the pager and then once it's done its calculation of the offset we grab it from it like this right now you may be wondering what is an offset well let's say you're getting um documents from users you're going to say select all columns from users something like this and then you're going to say limit 10. so in this case you're getting 10 documents 10 rows or 10 users but then what if you want the next 10 uh, let's say you have you get the first 10 records but you want the next 10 records that's where the offset comes in you tell it offset like this and then you put offset 10 like that so what offset 10 means is that skip the first 10 records and show me the next 10 so we're just telling it to start uh, collecting documents after the 10th one and then only retrieve 10 records after that so on the second page so this is the second page where we offset 10 on the first page is offset 0 because we are not skipping any documents but on the next page it's offset 10 on the third page it's offset 20. now as you can see the offset and the limit are kind of related as you can see this is 10 this is 20. so there's a relationship there going on because if i say offset 2 like this and limit 10 this is not very good because you find that i'll only skip two records and show the next 10 which means even the records on the previous page will show on the next page that's why these have to be coordinated to get exactly to not repeat records and stuff so there's a simple formula that i use to calculate offset and we're going to add it into the pager here <clears throat> so we're going to say something like this offset is equal to now here this is the constructor so the constructor runs immediately we load we create this so on this very line there we are running the constructor function once we do this that's why we're supplying that immediately and once we run it it then updates the offset because the offset starts at zero it assumes we're on page one so offset is equal to page number minus one times the limit that's the formula right there and this should be in brackets so this is evaluated as one so that's the offset right there but then as you can see we need to know the page number 
So how do we know the page number? Well, page number is equal to, we can grab that from the get variable. So page number will always be in the get and we're going to call it page. Now, of course, you can choose what variable name for the page is going to be. So we want to see, first of all, if it is set. So, or we just say if not empty like that, because not empty also checks to see if it is set. So if it is not empty, then we're going to grab this very page number and let's put a question mark. That's, so page number is going to be equal to this page number if it is set, but if it isn't, page number will be one. So we always assume we are starting on page one. And then here, just to make sure, because somebody can type some gibberish in the page, since this is being taken from the URL. So let's cast it as an integer so that if somebody types in some text, it's converted to int instead. So there we go. So we have our page number there. Now, sometimes the page number could be less than zero. So in this case, we're gonna say page number is equal to, first we check if page number is less than one, then uh, page number, if page number is less than one, it's going to be equal to one. Otherwise, we set it to the same page number like so. Okay, so at this point, we're making sure that we have a number and it's less than zero. And then it's less than, it's greater than one, than zero, sorry. We make sure it's greater than zero. So then we'll have a proper offset here, which is great. And it's gonna be here. Now, the thing we want, let, let me add another variable here called links. This one will be equal to an array, an empty array like that, okay. So here, what we want is to just generate some links. Now, what I'll do here is just echo uh, what is inside the get URL, like that. I want to see what's going on. So what I want to know is the current, um, the current link, right? So we say get that or, so if URL does not exist, we assume URL is equal to home like that. So let me refresh home. Okay, that way we don't get any errors. So let's imagine we're on a page called products. That's what we're gonna have in there. And then I am I need to have a question mark and say page is equal to two, for example. So I don't get this where I am here in the URL. I need this to, to get that from the query string. So in order to create, I need to create a a copy of the current page. That's what I'm trying to do here, the current location. So I'm gonna do that, but first of all, let me add root there, because root is required. Let me add a slash after root, and then let's add the current page. All right, so whatever is in the URL, which is maybe if I have products slash edit, something like this, this is what I'm gonna have. So what I'm trying to recreate is the current URL. So, so far so good. I have everything down to here, except where we have the question mark there. We don't see that part. So I want to add that part. Um, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Uh, this part is one thing, so maybe I can put that in brackets like so. Okay, and then concatenate the server query string. So I'm gonna do query underscore string like this, oops. All right, so let's see what we've got there. Now, if you don't know what's in the server uh, variable here, you can just echo it or the, just 
do a DD of this one or print readable of that one to see what it contains. So you can see what's useful in there. So as you can see now, we have URL is equal to products slash and then, oh wait, where did that come from? Okay, so maybe we don't need this part because it's repeating here. Let's remove this query string part for a second. So let me see what I get here. Uh, okay, that looks about right. What if I do this? What do I get? Okay, so seems about right, I think. The only thing is we just have to remove this URL is equal to and we should be home and dry. So I'm gonna come here and let's do string replace instead like that. So first of all, what are we looking for? We're looking for URL is equal to, we are replacing it with an empty string and where we, what we are replacing is this string over here. Okay, so that does it actually. Let me come back here and let's refresh. Okay, so we have this, this is great. Um, the only thing is we need, hmm, we need a question mark on the very first one here. All right, so what to do here, what to do, what to do. What if there's and something here? Okay, so I guess this works as well. It can do just as well. Okay, so the issue I'm having here is that um, I don't want the AND to start here. I want this to have a question mark first, the same way it's here. As you can see, after edit, there's a question mark and then the AND comes here instead of how it's doing it like this. So maybe let me go back to that URL thing and start from there again. So what I'm going to do is let me just uh, create a variable called URL and this one will be equal to get URL, but sometimes this won't exist. So we revert to home like that. Okay, great. Now that I have this, because this never carries the query string, so I can be sure about that. So what I can do is add this to here. So I connect this, that, and that. And so everything up to this point is before we add the query string. So then let me grab this. Let me cut this out for now. So up to this point, this is what we have. So let me refresh. Yeah, this is much cleaner. At this point now, because up to that point, I can, that's where the question mark starts. So I can add my own question mark there. So let's just concatenate a question mark like so. All right. So once we do that, then we can add our query string. So this is a query string here where we replace that equal to URL in there. But let's see what's happening here. Let me refresh. So the problem is it repeats this part. It repeats the the URL part, which is this up to here, that's repeated here as well. But then it comes with an and there, which is great. Okay, so what I can do is tell it to remove this part here from this section. Okay, so let me just create this as a variable so that it's easy to see. Let's do query string is equal to, and then I'm going to grab this like so. Let me paste it there like so. Okay, query string, and then now I can put my query string here like so. So no difference here, but what I want is to replace the URL from within the query string because it's repeated in there. So I'm going to do another string replace. So I'm going to do string replace like this. So what am I searching for? I'm searching for the contents of URL and I want to replace them with nothing. And the subject is this very query string like so. And then that's what we are adding to. 
So if I now refresh, at least we are getting somewhere. So products edit question mark, but I don't like this question and. So I can put uh, something to look for that specifically and then just replace it with a question mark. Or what I can do, because this and is coming from the query string itself, I can just put it there. Uh, where is this? Pur, 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 pur. What I can do is I can just trim this. I can tell it to trim. Usually trim is used to remove spaces at the beginning and end of a string. But what I can do here, I can put a comma and tell it exactly what string to trim instead. In this case, it's the and. So I want that query string to not come with an and when it's coming in. So I'll refresh and it didn't seem to work at all. Okay, so maybe I'm getting confused here. Let me do echo query string. Let me see what query string has once it's done there. So let me refresh. Okay, so query string is like this. And it comes with... So if I now ref remove this part, then it comes with this and that, right? So I can easily trim that and. So what's going on? What is going on? Oh, I understand now. Okay. I see what's happening. So here we are trimming it. We are trying to trim it be while it's still like this. So while it's still like this, there's no and at the end or at the beginning. So that's why it doesn't work. So we should trim it after we replace that to leave that and. So the only thing I need to do is move this trimming thing here and that last part as well. There. Is that is that correct? No, it isn't. This should be outside. Sorry, my bad. Like that. Okay. Because once we do a string replace here, then we trim the result of that. Yeah, we trim the ands that remain. So if I now refresh, this looks a lot like that. Okay. So it seems to be working very well. Now, in this case, in case we don't have a page number at this point, we should add one. So uh, here I'm going to call this current page is equal to. So this is the current page. Now we not, must check if the current page contains page number in there, right? So this might be a different variable. We can have a variable like ID, for example, uh, ID is equal to two, Y is equal to two. Now I want the current page so that I know the page number as well. So we already have page number here. So we'll say if current page does not have, I want to check in the string. If string string, that's how you check. Uh, the haystack is where we are checking. That's inside current page, the current link. The needle is what we are looking for. And in this case, we are looking for page is equal to in that string. So if that exists, uh, we should only care if it does not exist. So let's put a not there. So if it does not exist, let's change current page. So I'm going to copy uh, current page here is going to be equal to string replace. I'm, I'm sure. So or if not a string replace, we're just going to add page at the end. So we're just going to say current page dot equals, which means add to the end. And then in this case, we'll put an and like that and then put page is equal to right. So page is equal to and then concatenate the page number like that. All right. Now let me echo current page that way we see where we are at. So let me come here and let's refresh. Okay, so this is the current page. Even though you see in the URL, original URL, there's no page number. At least we know we're on page one. Now, I want to confirm that this is working by just adding and and then say page is equal to four. And as you can see, we're on page four now, which is correct. Page 10 
and there we go and if i remove the page number completely it tells me we're on page one so it's actually working because this link is exactly what we have there so the only thing we need to do now is create the link to the next page <clears throat> and uh, yeah the next and the first so first is not difficult to make so here we're gonna do first page is equal to this is going to be equal to current page but we just need to do a string replacement there so we're gonna do string actually in this case we're gonna do preg replace because I want to use a regular expression to avoid uh, problems sometimes text can be similar so you end up uh, replacing the wrong things so here I want to make sure I replace something called page is equal to and then this should have because it's a regular expression we can do stuff like this where we say 0 to 9 and put a plus so it's going to look for any number any any part of the string where it has page is equal to and then it's got a number after that the number can be of any length you can put a limit if you want to put a limit you can say something like uh, 2 comma 4 which means um, the number can can be a minimum of two characters maybe one character and a maximum of four that's up to you but plus just means one or more star means zero or more okay so once we have that we replace what are we replacing with we're replacing the same thing page is equal to but this time with the number one so we're replacing in current page okay great so that's the first page so this current page first page now we need next page now if you remember what I was saying here is that next page will give us the extra so the way we have one two three next will give us the next set of numbers so from three we're going to have four five six after that so this means the current page plus the extras right plus one so that will be the page number that we are going to be on at that time so all we do is say uh, we replace that number and instead of page one we're going to say page is equal to and then we concatenate here a number and this number will be equal to page number the current page right and then we add extras and then we add one okay and replacing the current page so this one is next so this is not really next page it's the next link so maybe let me call these links right I don't know uh, something like that and even this no going too far there and link something here a link all right great so we are doing just fine now I want to add these guys to links here so I'm gonna say links this links and this one is current page current I don't know do I call it current page yeah it doesn't matter this is gonna be equal to current link so that's exactly what we'll do for the rest of these what am I doing okay so current and this one will be first and this one will be next all right so we have these guys in there that's good oopsie daisy okay so this is great now let's see if those guys will work 
as intended. So now that we have this, we can go ahead and put the content here. So, um, this is immutable, so we never change this. This is always the first link. So all I need to do here is just echo out this and links. And then what's in there is first link like that and close that. Great. And then I'll copy this and put next link. Boom. And then here I will put current link. Right? Something like that. Mm -hmm. So the only ones remaining are this one and this one. So we need to figure out how to deal with those. But let's see if uh, things can work with what we have. And also, by the way, let's come back here. We need proper numbers here also first. So this one will be equal to the current page. So that's going to be uh, this page number. Okay. That does it. Okay, great. So let me now refresh. Let's see what's going on. So this, uh, we're on page one. Remember that these are fixed, so they won't be changing. Now let me click next. Okay, so nothing is happening. Uh, this is not working. Let's go to first. First works. One. Okay, so next is not working as we want. So let's see. Oh, so it says first. So this should be next. Sorry about that. Let me refresh. Okay, so let's click next. 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 So as you can see, we are following uh, this thing here. Page is equal to. So we are on currently page number seven, which is true. And we're going to nine. And when I click, we go to 11. So it's keeping three of these. One. Next. Next. So it's kind of working, but let's see how, uh, why this number isn't changing there. Wait, this page number here is equal to one. So we didn't replace this. So we have to do that here. So I'm going to do this here and say page number is equal to page number. So we're changing the this page number is equal to that. Okay, that way it updates. So if I refresh, you see we're on page three. Next, we're on page five. Next, we're on page seven, and so on. So if I click, that's the page. If I click here, we go to page one. Next, next, next. So that's working. The thing that's not working is these two in between and we can see how to increase those as well. Okay, so what we want to do is make a loop instead. So instead of um, doing what we are doing here, um, in fact, on saving to links, I can remove this part just to keep things shorter. I'll do that and remove these as well. Nope, not there, just here. Boom, boom. Okay, just to keep things short. So what I want to do is make a loop here. So let's do uh, a for loop. Now this for loop starts with, usually you say x is equal to, and that's the start point, semicolon, and then x less than a specific number, maybe 10, and then x plus plus. Now this could be i, I think i is used most of the time instead of x, but doesn't matter. So I want to close this PHP and say end for. Close that. Okay. So don't mind this down here. Let's concentrate on this one here. Now, on the start here, 
I want to use this start and then this equal to or less than this end. Okay, so where am I getting these values up here? We created this start and end, and currently there's just one and one as default values. But what I want is to be able to loop. So think about it. If, for example, we have a number like this, so we're on page seven, right? And that extras value represents how many numbers on the left, on the left and on the right of this current page. So currently it's at one and one, so that's fine, right? So how do we increase that number? Uh, if we want to increase that number, if if the user puts extras as, let's say, four, it means the start point should be the current page minus four, and then the end should be the current page plus four, so that we include four numbers on both sides. So currently it's one, so what's going to happen is that just after we... Since we now know the page number, we can say this start is equal to the current page minus extras, like that. Okay, and then the end should just be equal to plus extras, like that. So that extras is one, so this is end. So in this case, we're going to have the start point, which is page number. Let's imagine on page one. So page one minus extras, which is one. So it's going to start at zero, but we don't want page zero, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure, just like we did with the page number here, let's put an exact copy of this, but for the start point. So I'm going to grab this. The start should always be at uh, at number one. So if it's less than one, set it to one. Otherwise, set it to whatever value it is. Okay. So that's great. That makes sure that we always start looping at number one. And once we start at number one, uh, then the end will be plus extras, whatever that extra is. So extra is one. The end is currently one, so a page number is one. Mm, let's see, is this correct? If we are on page seven, then that will loop up to seven, right? Plus, uh, yes, actually, that kind of makes sense. Okay, it does make sense. So let's see it in action if it does make sense. And then here, what we will do is we'll put a number uh, x whatever x is at that time. So let me put PHP like so. So let's see how that will loop. Now for now, we're going to mute these guys here. Okay, so commenting for HTML. So let me refresh. So namespace declaration statement has to be the very first statement. Okay, where have we gone wrong? Line three. Hmm. Where have we gone wrong? Ah, right. I don't know what happened here. That should be the very first thing there. Something weird happened there. Okay, what's this S down here anyway? I can't figure that out. What have I done, man? There's a lingering S somewhere, maybe in these uh, HTML files. I think when saving, okay, there we go. It's in the footer. Sometimes when pressing Control Save, Control S to save, it doesn't uh, it doesn't press the Control key, so it ends up just typing S. Okay, so there we are. We are on page seven, and as you can see, there's it starts at six, seven, eight, which is great. But uh, where's the next page? I think I may have made a mistake here. Okay, I should, shouldn't should have muted the next. I should mute up to there. So let's come back and refresh. Okay, so things are happening. That's great. If I go to the next, you see there's nine, eight, nine, ten. This is great. It's doing what we want. Now, if we want more extras, for example, I can come back to header here. 
where we are doing the pagination. And when instantiating, I can do comma and put four, for example. So which means I'm going to have four numbers on the left and on the right of the current page. And as you can see, that's what's happening. So it can multiply very quickly. So you see 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And if we go like that, there we go. If we go to the first page, this is what we get. Now we need to highlight the current page for a start. So page are here. Now it, that's simple because we just need to add active on the right thing. Now, if we add active there, it means every one of them will be active. That's not what we want. So we need to put a question mark or a an if statement over here. So here I can do this and echo, tell it to echo active, but on a certain condition, we can do that by putting a question mark. So here, if X is equal to this, page number, then we echo active. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. If we do that, we need the full colon, I guess. I don't know, maybe it'll work or not. Nah, <laughs> too hopeful there. So I need to put a full colon and put an empty string on the other side. So if it's not correct, it, should, it shouldn't echo anything. And there we go. So it's on page one, right? We go to page. Ah, the links are wrong here, but if we use the next page, you see we're on page six, next page, 11, next page, 16. So things are working as intended. As you can see, there are four on this side and four on this side. If we go on the first page, the four on this side don't exist because there are no pages behind here. So it works very well. Next, next, next. Okay. Very, very good. Um, with that, let's put links as well so for the links here we know this is the page number right so now the actual link so let me move this down like so and that like this so that we can see what's going on the link is supposed to be here so all i'm going to do is grab the current link like this and paste it here so there we go boom but I want to replace within this. So I'm just going to do a preg replace here. I'm going to say preg replace so that I use regular expressions. And then of course, I want to replace every any part that has page is equal to, and then some numbers of any length, right? And I'm going to replace that with page is equal to, and then I'll put dot to concatenate the current number, which is X. And what's the subject? This is the subject right here. So let's replace that there. All right. So that gives us the correct link of that current page. So if I click here, if you hover on these numbers, you see that now they have the right link. So 18, 21, we're on 21, we're on 19 now. If I click on this, we're on 15. So pages are responding as intended. Yeah, actually we've got it right this time. Everything works as intended. Now we have proper pagination. So if those numbers are too many for you, when instantiating the, the pager, you can choose maybe a number like two. I think that will be better something like that uh -huh. alrighty then so that's pagination for you it is working as intended uh, let me see is there anything missing so we can delete these guys over here in the middle so let me remove that like so now uh, when it comes to these other functions what you can do is copy this very stuff here and paste it over here and the only thing you change is there are classes here. These are bootstrap classes. So you add your own Tailwind classes here so that the pagination looks as you wish. And then if you have a custom CSS, you can do the same thing. Just put the classes that you created here to suit your needs so that you suit the, the current system. Now, what you could do, another option is 
um, you can say UL styles, right? Or UL class. So here you can do this and say something like uh, this UL class. Okay. So you grab that variable and you put it here. That way you can set it when you want to to use different classes instead of having to come here and edit the contents of this you can just set them directly here when you the way we are setting the the limit for example you can do something like pager and then you want the ul class to be equal to something maybe you have new classes from tailwind you can put those classes here bg light that's from uh, bootstrap by the way no oh, button or something like that so you can do it this way if you want but i find it a little cumbersome so i would rather you just put functions for the most common use cases that way you don't have to worry about the classes uh, being accurate okay so this i'll leave it as it is even though all of these guys have i want to do this part here even though all of these guys have bootstrap classes but then you can edit to suit your needs and put your very own classes on each one and then you can make as many functions as you want and then use the correct function depending on the system you're using at that time all right so this is it for pagination and this i've forgotten something uh, we might upgrade in future that's fine so next up will be the migration class and then a couple more videos and then we can start on making actual plugins all right guys so i'll see you in the next video